Hi Flosstube! My name is Jen, Backcountry Stitcher, and welcome to my channel. I am still here. <laughs> I think I looked up in the last time I filmed was, or last time I posted, it was like January 28th or 29th, and so it's been quite a while, and there has been good reason for that. Things have been super, super crazy in my life. Nothing bad, all good things, but uh, if you're interested, I'll I get, I'll give a life update like at the end of the video. Um, but because I've been gone so long, I have gotten a ton done in the last, uh, like what, what's it been? Month and a half, almost two months. So yeah, I have a lot to show you guys. I mean, this is this is almost a whip parade. Not quite, but I'm looking at the pile of whips next to me. And I think I have, I have two finishes to show you. And then I have eight, eight whips. So that's 10 projects I worked on since I last saw you guys. Um, and I think I have, I think there's only like one other active whip. So like I said, this might as well be a whip parade, but uh, we're just going to call it a regular floss tube update. So it's, um, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so let's, um, oh, one very important life update that I don't want to wait until the end. So in between the insane amount of traveling and uh, you know, just stuff going on around the house, I decided it would be a really good idea to get a new dog. Um, so I would like to introduce everyone. This is Coco. Hi, Coco, say hello to everyone. Yeah, are you a sweet girl? She seems a little confused, but so Coco is a Pomeranian and she's about a little over five and a half years old. And I got her, she, um, she actually came from a breeder. Um, she was a, uh, the, she was a breeding dog and she just had her last litter of puppies back in December. And so when I contacted the breeder, you know, looking for a Pomeranian, she was like, Hey, I have this, you know, female adult. And I was like, that sounds amazing because, you know, I don't know if you guys have ever seen Pomeranian puppies, but they're absolutely insane. They're super cute, but they're nuts. Um, and so I was like, oh, that sounds like it'd be a really good fit. So um, just timing wise, uh, we wanted to give her some time and then the breeder was traveling. So that's why we had to uh, get a new dog in the middle of insanity. So this is Coco. She's very sweet and uh, she is being a very, very good stitching buddy. She um, she follows me pretty much everywhere and this is her kind of nervous, um, but because uh, she doesn't know why I'm holding her up, uh, but she's usually very, very energetic. Um, she just got spayed and that went really, really, really well. And the next thing to do is her teeth, but we're going to give her some time. Um, but yeah, so this is Coco. This is our newest, newest addition and we love her very much. We've had her for a couple of weeks and she's fitting in just fine. Um, our, uh, our big dog is a little bit jealous uh, and she likes the cat, but the cat is not super thrilled with her. Um, but yeah, everything's going really well. So there's Coco. Just wanted her to say hi. Okay, Coco, you can go. There you go, good girl. Um, so yeah, so let's get into it. So like I said, I have two finishes to show you. So I'll show you uh, my first one. And I, guys, I really tried to prepare for this. Um, I think I, I really, I really tried, um, but it, I'll, I'll explain later why my life is a disaster right now. So I finished um, the spawns and this is the, I think it's number two. Yeah, it's number two in the Cottage Garden Samplings uh, Year in the Woods. So this is the third one of those that I finished. I've done the fox and the raccoon and I finished the swans. This was kind of a travel piece for me and um, finished this on one of my work trips and I absolutely love it. So there they are. 
And this is stitched on 32 count linen in the color Storm by Picture This Plus. I'll try to remember to say fabrics. I'm really, really bad about that. But it's stitched with all the call fours, including the, uh, I think it's Weeks Dye Works, I want to say. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I uh, thought this came out really cute. So that is one of my finishes. My other finish is, so I've been doing the, um, uh, what are they called? The Cricut Collection, the Seasons, the ones with the Seasons that they do. And um, I did finish Winter just in time for the Spring Equinox. So I finished Winter and this is what it looks like. So it's quite wide. And there, I just adore this. This came out so cute. And I'll try to put pictures in too of where I was last time you saw them. I'm pretty confident I have those. So yeah, so there's winter. Trying to make sure I show you everything. And if you can see, um, maybe you can see in the snowman a little bit and in the snowflakes. Yeah, you can kind of see it in the snowman. So the white, all the white in the snowflakes in the snowman um, have a uh, chronic blending filament in it. Uh, and they, uh, so it gives it just a little bit of sparkle. Um, my autumn piece, I put some buttons on. I, I had some buttons for this one, but I tried them and I just didn't really like it. I think there was a lot going on in here already. So I ended up not doing buttons on this one. And maybe it was just, I didn't have the right ones. I don't know, but that is winter. So the spring, I'm, I just got all of the floss for spring, um, but I haven't picked out fabric yet. I have a bunch of fabric and I'm going to see if any of that works for it. I don't like the called for fabric that they use. Um, it's just, it's like a yellow and unfortunately the, the letters kind of the colors that they use for the letters just kind of blend into it, at least on the the um, model stitch. So I don't really, I'm not really into it. So we'll see. I'm hoping to get that started on the spring equinox, which would be the 20th. I think that's a really lofty goal um, considering what's going on. Uh, just I haven't even prepped the floss or anything like that. And there is a lot of different colors. There's a lot going on in the spring one. So I'll, I'll show you guys once I start working on it. So um, onto my active whips. And like I said, I have eight of them. So strap in. Um, so the first, and this is in no particular order. This is literally in the order I just piled them up in. So um, the first one is Scenic Farm by Dimensions. And there is a sal going on with this one. It's hashtag scenic farm sal. I am horrible about posting on Instagram, like absolutely awful about it. So I have not been doing, and maybe, yeah, there's a better picture. That's a bigger picture of it. Um, I have not really been participating in the hashtag, but I am stitching it, obviously. So yeah. And I'll show you a picture where it was last time, um, but here, I actually got quite a bit done on this. This has been a travel piece for me. So I stitch on this mostly in the hotels, but I think, I'm not sure, but I don't think the house was finished the last time I saw you guys. I think it was close to being finished. So I definitely added in um, the trees and more of this background. Um, this is all like blended, um, half stitch with like four strands, which is a lot going on there. Well, that looks really good on the camera. It looks better on camera than it does in real life. Hmm. This is definitely, um, a tough, there's, there's parts of, like, there's a lot of confetti in the tree, not so much the trees, but definitely in the house, there's a lot of confetti, but then there's also like these big blocks of color, which I don't really mind. And like, even though this looks like a ton, these are really big blocks of, of color. Uh, this little post thing's gonna be a tree at some point. 
And so it can get a little bit tedious, but that's kind of why it's good for traveling because after a long day of work um, on the weekends, uh, it's nice to just have something that's a little bit mindless to do, I guess. But that is a Scenic Farm cell or Scenic, Scenic Farm by Dimensions. And this is just on the kit, Ada. And I'm actually getting pretty close to the, the end here on this page. So I'm doing this page and then I'll move over to the other half. You can see where the divide is. So that is Scenic Farm. And I, how do I wanna do this? Cause I wanna take photos. I think I'm just gonna leave them out. Am I gonna do that? Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna leave them out and then I'll put them back. Okay, so the next one is uh, a new start since I last saw you. This is A Year in the Woods number 12. This is The Reindeer. And this has become my new other travel piece. And guys, I mean, this is, it's gorgeous. This is definitely, I mean, I, I do really like all of them, um, but this is probably my favorite. So I started down here by the hoof. I don't know why. That's just where I felt like starting. So there it is. Um, let me just unclip this. And obviously I don't have a before picture because this is a new start. And again, I'm sorry it's like wrinkly here, but um, I did not have time, nor do I know where my iron is. So that's how far I've gotten on this one. So yeah. It's a pretty decent start. And I'm trying to do these tiny snowflakes like as I go, because there are a ton of them, and I hate doing them. I hate doing these snowflakes, you guys. So yeah, you can really see it. Some of the other ones, like the variegation in the uh, specialty threads, I think this brown one is uh, it's Weeks Die Worth and it's called Bright Leaf. And that's what's making up like the, this part, this brown part in here. You can actually really see the variegation in these threads, which I feel like for a lot of the threads that they picked for these, you can't really see the variegation very well. So that was really kind of nice. Yeah, this has been fun. And this is also stitched on um, 32 count linen in the color Storm by Picture This Plus. So when I started these, because I started the Fox first and um, I didn't really know about all the different fabrics. Um, so I started stitching them on linen. I think if I had to go back, I would do it on even weave. I'd probably stick with the, because um, Bestitch Me uh, did a whole series um, and actually, the winter one is stitched on the This is Gray Mist by Be Stitch Me, 32 count uh, even weave. I think it's Lugana. Um, and this was actually made for the Year in the Woods series, but because I had already started stitching the fox on the linen, or I had already stitched the fox on the linen, I decided to stick with that for the winter ones. But all of the other ones are going to be on the Be Stitch Me fabrics that were made for it is my plan. Okay. All right. So this one, um, all right, I'm going to, how do I explain what's going on with this one? So this is, uh, the pointed fifth. I'll have to insert a picture here. This is the pointed fifth by long dog samplers. And I got a lot of progress on this because I was having so much fun stitching it. And this is where I got to. So I finished, I think since the last time I saw you guys, I finished this page. So these are two complete pages, and then I started in on this page, okay? Now, I got to the point where I was doing back stitching in here on this little bird. And I was like looking at the, because Pattern Keeper, I've been stitching this off of Pattern Keeper. Pattern Keeper doesn't have, work with back stitch, right? So I was looking at the, um, the PDF file for the back stitch, and I was like, something's wrong. Like there's supposed to be three, um, three blank 
spaces in here because like you can kind of see like there's back stitching in here there should be there's two rows of it here but there's supposed to be three so I couldn't figure out what was going on and then I finally went and and compared everything like in real detail and figured out that pattern keeper has cut off the very last row of every page so this is actually this these top pages are missing their very bottom row which you can't tell here really it's it doesn't um doesn't really show you know like it, it's just geometric patterns and it's pretty blocky so it's really hard to you can't really tell which is great but when you start getting lower down it starts to become more apparent in like the animals heads there's a few animals that their heads cross pages and it becomes more apparent so this got put on timeout um because I was really really upset because I put obviously a lot of work into it I mean I have two pages done here I've got a lot done so I think what I'm gonna do um, because I can't fix it in Pattern Keeper. I tried to um, re-upload it, that didn't work. I tried changing the, um, you know, how many, because they ask you like how many rows are um, gray, and I tried changing that answer, that didn't work, that made it obscenely worse. Um, and uh, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stitch off of Pattern Keeper, but when I get down to where the page break is, I'm gonna have to switch over to using the paper pattern. So I'm gonna print off the paper pattern for this. Um, yeah. I think that's what I'm gonna have to do, honestly. Um, or I'm just gonna have to switch to the paper pattern completely, which um, would be difficult to do but I think uh, yeah I'm gonna have to use both pattern keeper and the paper pattern or I'm just gonna have to start over which I'm not really keen on doing so it's gonna be um it's gonna be a challenge especially since I won't when I'm at the page breaks I won't be able to count off of pattern keeper um I'll have to just kind of start counting off again I I don't know if any of you guys have any suggestions on how to handle this that would be great I mean I'm kind of set in here like and it's not going to make a huge difference between these the first row and the second row of pages all, along the entire way that's not going to make a big difference it's not going to be noticeable and I'm kind of because I could like just pick all of all of this out but it's gonna look terrible because there's gonna be so much like fuzzies and as much as the fuzzy thing like the little the thing that looks like the eyebrow brush um as much as that helps it doesn't completely fix it and so yeah I think I'm just gonna have to kind of combine the paper it's just it's gonna be tough but I think that's what I'm gonna have to do I don't know if anyone has any other suggestions or whatnot that would be would be welcome but you can't tell right now I can't tell but obviously there's problems so anyway so it's currently on timeout which means I don't know that I'm gonna get to my goal of 25% this year because it's just yeah I don't know or I could just abandon it which I hate to do so I don't know what would you guys do let me know. Uh, this is being stitched with the color in one color. It's color DMC 154 on um, just 32 count, or sorry, 28 count uh, Joblin in the color ivory, which I think is beautiful, but yeah. So anyway, so that's what's going on with that, those shenanigans. Again, any um, advice or thoughts would be appreciated. And um, I'm going to apologize too because I unzipped some of these, but I didn't unzip all of them. So I am sorry about that. Um, this next one is my matzo cover. I did pick this back up in honor of Passover that is starting. Uh, <laughs> you'd think I'd know this because my family is coming into town. Uh, I believe it starts April 5th. 
the night of April 5th. We're celebrating it. It's the first week of April and we're celebrating it actually the second night of Passover just because of how travel stuff worked out. So anyway, so this is the matzo cover. This is uh, by Cooler Design Studios. This is the mock-up of what it's gonna look like. And actually I got quite a bit done on this um, more than I more than I thought I would. So um, let me just take my my needle minder off. Um, and I do have a hanging thread here, so I apologize for that. Um, I can't remember why, but anyway, so here it is. is it in all of its glory. So since the last time I had pulled it out, um, I finished the, um, I finished the apples over here and the bees. And then I moved over here. This is parsley and there are going to be, um, longer stems coming off of it. Um, but hang on one second. I've got a, whoa, sorry. <laughs> Um, so there are going to be longer stems coming off of it, but I'm going to wait till a little bit later to do that. And then I moved over to the lettuce, head of lettuce here. So we've got the symbols of spring and, um, greenery. So I got quite a bit done, honestly. This is being stitched on, um, 28 count linen, and this is just opalescent white. Yeah, I think it's coming out really nicely. It's not, this is going faster because like over these leaves are so fiddly. You can, it's so hard to tell, but there's so many different shades of green and there's bled. It's just insane. And the apples, there's like all those different colors in them, but this is a bit blockier, the lettuce. So it's doing, it's easier. So this is obviously not going to be done in time for this Passover, but uh, I do think, I don't know, I think if I pull it out a few times over the year, I should be able to get it done. It's, it's moving pretty quickly, all things considered. Yeah, I really love it. I love this little, like, this little motif over here with the bees and the honey, the little honeycombs. I thought that was really cute. And that is my matzo cover. And let's see, what do we have next? Oh, we have a mirabilia. So let's see if I, oh, so sorry guys. Uh, let's see if I can find the cover photo because I, here it is. So this is a Cathedral Woods Goddess. And I feel like I just like completely screwed up my so this is Cathedral Woods Goddess by Mirabilia. And I think at my whip, it was either my whip parade or my last, um, my last update, I had finished her top half. So I'll put a picture in because she's been moved in the cue snap. And now this is where we are at today. So I've started kind of coming down here. I did add the back stitching um, on this arm. So that looks really cool. I like that with the leaves wrapping around her arm. And I added some of the back stitching here. But I'm working on these leaves coming down right now. And I started in on her dress a little bit. And guys, the amount of Krennic. <laughs> And there's like two different colors of Krennic primarily in here. There's like a darker one, a lighter one. It, it's pretty much the same pattern in each of these, like where there's dark, light, dark. Um, but it's, and then sometimes it's like, there's like just three little stitches right there. Three little stitches of DMC. <laughs> but she's really pretty. I mean, she's super sparkly. So I worked on her, I don't know. I What I've been doing is like, I'll pull a piece out, I'll put it in my Lowry stand, and then that's what I work on for like 
anywhere from three to five days um because it's already like set up and easy to go so i haven't been really like switching out projects every day it's just again it's just i have to go with what's easiest for me right now so this is on 32 count ubana in the color heritage uh, i think this is picture this plus yes it's picture this plus because i got it for one two three stitch so and I love her. So yeah, so I have been, you know, if you've been watching me, you know, I've been splitting the pattern into quarters, really. So the top two are done. And then I'm working on this quarter here. Um, and then you can, I mean, you can see right here where the page split is. So because the Mirabilia patterns are split into like top and bottom halves. Um, but I, that was too much for me. So I just split it into quarters. And that's been working out really well. So that is Cathedral Woods Goddess. Oh, my other puppy. Benny, you want to come up and say hi? Come here. Come here. My other dog has been very needy lately um, with the new dog in the house, as you can see. Uh, this is Benny. Oh, and now Coco's come back. So, okay, listen, buddy. I'm filming a floss tube here. <laughs> okay. So needy, everyone. All right, so this next one, um, I don't know where the cover picture went to this. So I'll have to um, insert a, um, I'll have to insert a picture. But this is Disintegration, and this is my Heaven and Earth Designs uh, picture, or project, my Heaven and Earth Designs full coverage. So I actually, I switched this from the scroll frame to a Q-snap. I finally made the transition and uh what so I actually have finished two pages and I moved the scroll the sorry the hue snap so I'll put in a picture here of what it looked like the last time you guys saw it and then I'll also put in a picture um here of what it looked like when I moved the Q snap well actually I'll here this is where it was with you last time you saw it um and then this is where it is today and I'll put in a picture here of what it looked like when I moved the Q-snap so that you can kind of get a comparison. But really, you know, this ring is mostly what I've been working on along with a lot of background. I am in background hell, you guys. And what I've started doing is rather than doing, you know, diagonals completely across, I've started doing it by page, but still on a diagonal in a cross country style. So. So I'll basically pick my colors like based on where I'm at in that diagonal. But if I still have thread, I'll kind of work it all the way in. So yeah, so I'm working on this, this diagonal here is what I'm working on. But as you can see, some of the colors like bled down, especially down in this, um, this ring part here. So I really have started doing it by page and that's been a little bit uh, easier for me to like easier bites to make. Um, it's a lot easier to, um, it, it's just easier to manage. And it's kind of nice because now that I have it in my Lowry stand, it's really easy to flip over and end my threads, which before I was doing it blindly and that was doable, but, but difficult. So and now that I'm kind of being a little bit more easy on myself as far as carrying the thread until it's done, that's made it easier too. But this looks so cool. It's really got that three dimensionality to it. But there is so much background. So much background. And like, I love the look that it's giving, but it's a lot of background and it's a lot of these like kind of dull browns which again are beautiful when they're all put together but when you're just looking at that one strand you're like oh my gosh another <laughs> another taupe or dull brown so that is disintegration um like i said it's artwork by stephanie puman law charted by heaven and earth designs and this is just um 20 count ada 
And I actually, I wasn't really sure how I felt about the 20 count um, when I've been stitching on it with my full coverages, because I picked it out before I really kind of knew better. But since I switched it into a Q-snap, uh, I don't know why, it's just been a lot easier to work with. So I don't mind it as much anymore. So that's disintegration. And I had, there was so much floss. Oh my God. So much floss. All right, we're down to the last two. So thank you for sticking with me. Um, this one is my piece that I am doing with some friends. So this is called Under the Sea. And it's, a, it's by Teresa Koga. And this was a Stitch West exclusive. And what we're doing is we each picked a motif. So I picked the seahorse and I'm stitching the seahorse on everybody's piece. Um, so, and we're all getting together, except for one of us, Jamie, I'm looking at you. I'm really sad um, that you're not coming, but there's still time. Uh, we're all going to stitch nanigans uh, in April. I think it's the third week of it, third weekend of April. It's down in Las Vegas. And so when we get together at Stitch Nanigans, we're going to finish all of our, all of each other's motifs and then uh, have finishes together. So um, like I said, the only one, this is table 10 from uh, Stitch West. And yeah, so I actually, <laughs> this was a labor of love um, because I love my friends, but stitching this was, it was, it was a lot. So I actually finished all of my part. So now I just have some motifs to put in and actually Jamie, um, Jamie stitched hers for me when we got together yesterday. So that's her little fish. Um, and then Christina stitched her little lobster. That was her motif. So she stitched that because Jamie and Christina and I get together when we can, uh, like try to do it about once a month um, or so or every couple of weeks. Um, but uh, so they stitched those for me. And then I'm doing the seahorse on everyone's piece. But yeah, it's so that's why there's like some blank spaces in here. Uh, it's because my friends are going to be stitching them. This was a tough one, especially that whale. Oy. That was a lot of 926. A lot of 926. I almost, I'm not going to lie, stitching that whale, it almost broke me. It almost broke me. And I almost gave up on this piece because of this whale. And the mermaid has like different colors in her tail, but it's really hard to see. I don't know. Um, I think Alyssa from Stitching at the Cabin, uh, she saw what was going on with all of uh, the rest of ours and she ended up picking a different color for that pattern that's in there. So hers looks really cool, but yeah, I'm not, definitely not redoing that tail now. Not gonna happen. So, and I also left out the back stitching on these fishes. There's supposed to be back stitching on these fishes' mouths, but I left that out. I just didn't like them. Also, it didn't tell you, like for the back stitching, it didn't really tell you what colors to use for any of the back stitching. Um, so yeah, kind of just made it up as we went along. I mean, it's really cute now that it's put together. And I actually really enjoyed stitching those flowers. That's like a variegated thread with the um, leaves. I think it's tarragon from I don't know. Um, and this is stitched on 32 count linen. And I don't know what the color is because this is what they gave us because they kitted it all up for us, which I thought was super, super sweet. Um, and yeah, but uh, yeah, so I thought that's turning out really cute. Not my normal style. Uh, you know, I normally am not. Uh, it's no not my normal style. Um, but it has been really fun to do with, with friends. So, um, okay. Last one. 
This is my other Mirabilia. And this is Lilith of Labrador. So that's what she's going to look like. And this picture, I, I honestly feel it. I've said this before and I will say it again. I will die on this hill that the Mirabilia, uh, Mirabilia model stitches do not do these pieces justice. I think, I don't know why they go with the, like this is I think water lily. I'm not sure, but I just don't feel like it, she pops on it. So the last time you guys saw this, I do believe, I'm pretty confident it was when I finished her top half. So I'll show you because I've since moved the Q-snap, but I finished the her, her top part with her hair and her body and face. So I did move the Q-snap and I've started working on her tail. And this has been really fun because... It's blockier colors, but not too blocky. Um, there's still, you know, variation enough in it. And I did kind of bleed this over a little bit. It just made sense to bleed it over into this page. But this tail, it's huge. It's enormous. It's going to come like all the way down in here. But I did start getting this basically from here, all of this is where I finish or what I've done since I last saw you guys. And I really love these colors. I think her hand looks a little funny. Looks like a fish hand, but I think it'll look better once it's backstitched. I did do the backstitching on her upper, upper body. Oh. And this is being stitched on 32 count Lugana in the color, oh shoot, um, Tsunami, color Tsunami by Be Stitch Me. And I really like that fabric choice that I made. I mean, I like it. That's really all that matters at the end of the day, isn't it? So yeah, I think she's, she's beautiful. Um, yeah, so we made it. 37 minutes in. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's, uh, those are all of my whips that I've worked out in the last like, I guess it's been almost two months, like, I guess it's like a month and a half or so, I think since I last saw you, not quite two months. But um, yeah, so if you're here for the stitching, that's really what I have. I don't have any acquisitions. Uh, I actually, that's probably not true. I think I do have like, a fabric of the month rolling around somewhere here, but um, I don't, yeah, I, I don't have it. I don't know where it is. So, I mean, it's here. I just don't know where it is in my life. Um, so anyways, so I don't really have much more of the stitching. So if you're here just for the stitching, thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, it's always good to be, it, it's good to be back. I don't know how frequently, I think these are just going to be kind of intermittent when I have time to do them, especially just with everything. I think the next couple of months are really busy and then it should calm down a little bit. We'll see. Um, but yeah, so thank you for being here. I appreciate it. And definitely feel free to reach out if you, I'll put my information as far as Instagram. I'm really bad at posting on that, but also my email address um, below. All right, so if you would like to hear about the insanity that is my life, uh, this is, so here's what's been going on. This is why I haven't really been around much lately. So first of all, I have mentioned before, I took on a new job uh, where I, so I'm still working my full-time job as a practicing veterinary dentist. So I still work pretty much four days a week uh, doing that, uh, still doing surgery and, and dealing with patients and all of that. Um, but then I took on a second job where I work for a company that uh, does uh, teaching and they do, they, they do a lot of things, but one of the things that they do is teaching and they have a bunch of um, boarded diplomates who um, go into different veterinary hospitals across the country and we teach veterinary dentistry and we do it there's labs that we do so i work with uh 
uh, the veterinarians on more hands-on stuff on how to do extractions properly um, and more efficiently. But then there's also this teaching uh, program called Best Practices Workshop where uh, the first day is actually with the entire hospital and we workshop how to incorporate dentistry into the practice. What can we be doing better? Um, what are we already doing that's great? And how can we enhance that? And then we do labs the, the next day with the um, with the doctors and the technicians. So it's a really big thing. And I have, have um, been doing a lot of it. Uh, March has definitely been quite crazy because I have three scheduled. I've done two already. Um, and I have another one coming up next weekend. And two of those three were, are, have been the, are the best practices. So the two day things, which are so amazing and I love doing it, but it is exhausting. Um, especially when I'm like, working four days a week and then I'm leaving after work on Friday to fly somewhere um, and then teaching for two days and then flying back usually pretty early in the morning on Monday so I can still get stuff done over the weekend and then going right back to work so it's it's a lot of travel um, I don't mind it honestly I really don't mind the travel I don't mind the airport I have it pretty much down to a science at this point um but yeah, I, so I've been doing a bunch of teaching, uh, that's gonna get put on the back burner for April because in April, my family is coming to town the first week of April for Passover. And then I have two stitching retreats back to back. Um, so I'm doing stitch nanigans in Las Vegas. And then the weekend after I'm going to stitch North, um, which I'm really, really excited about. Cause I've, I'm, I'm just excited. I'm, that one, I don't know anyone. So if you're going to the Stitch North retreat in April, please let me know because I don't know anyone that's going really. Um, even floss tubers. I think the only one I know that's going that weekend is Stitchman Darcy, I think is going, but I am not even a hundred percent sure on that. So if you're going that weekend, please let me know. So April is going to be pretty crazy. I think I'm only going to have like one free weekend in April. Um, but the other thing that's been going on in my life is, uh, we are doing renovations on our house. And that's why when I say, I don't know where anything is in my house, it's because I literally don't know where anything is in my house. We have been moving stuff around constantly because we painted the entire interior of our house. Entire interior. There was one room we didn't have painted because we had already painted it, but um, the rest of the house has been painted. So we've been having to move stuff around for that. And then um, we redid all of the carpet in the house too. So our house has carpet and wood floors. The wood floors are great. They're like hardwood. Um, we did that or we left that, but we redid all of the carpet. We also had to redo our bathrooms because... <laughs> So it was kind of one of those things where it's like, okay, there was carpet in the bathrooms, which I don't, I don't like. If you have carpet in your bathrooms and you like it, more power to you. But I did not like it. It was weird for me. And so we needed to get rid of the carpet in the bathrooms. Um, that was not a choice that we made. That was a choice by the previous homeowners. So we had to retile the, it was, it's not real tile. We're doing like, um like luxury vinyl flooring or something. I don't know. So we had to do that. And then we were like, well, if we're doing that, let's just switch out the vanities. Um, so we had to switch out the vanities in all three of the bathrooms, you know, new toilets we decided to do. Um, and then we're reading one of our, the master bathroom, the closet is in the bathroom. So we're like, well, oh, we're going to redo the closet too. Um, we also, in addition to painting the walls, we painted all the doors. Um, it's been a whole thing. Uh, we are on the downward end of it. Like we're, it's slowing down because the carpet and painting and everything's been done, but we still have a lot of like other little things to be done. Although the closet, my husband's custom building the closet and that's going to be a bigger, bigger issue. So, um, but for the most part, we're just like putting the bathrooms back together. We're getting our our lives a little bit put back together, but, um, it's been crazy. So 
that is why I haven't been filming. I, it seems like I've gotten a lot of stitching done, but I will tell you there were definitely a lot of days where I did not stitch at all. I just couldn't. Um, I was either too tired or it was physically impossible to stitch in a house that's being renovated. So, I mean, honestly, I think it only seems like I got this much done because it's been so long since I filmed. So anyway, um, I'm trying to think if there's any, there's really nothing else major going, I mean, that's a lot of major stuff going on. Um, but, oh, and, and we're starting to plan a trip for my, my 40th birthday. We're going to go to Hawaii in September. So we're starting to plan that too. Um, yeah. So it's just a lot of stuff. I have to say my husband has been amazing throughout this whole renovation process. He's been really taking point on that because I just have not had time with work. So yeah, so that's my life. Um, again, I don't think I have any other life updates. I feel like I'm kind of babbling right now, so I'm just going to cut this off. But it was really good to see you guys. Uh, again, reach out. Uh, I love hearing all your comments. And you can email me and message me on Instagram, whatever. Uh, it was really good to, to see you guys. So I, I don't know when I'm going to film again, um, but I will film as soon as I can. All right. Bye.